Hi guys and welcome back. This time I will design a push-pull converter for low power and, and low voltage application. So the idea is that we use the push-pull to have an input voltage of 5 volts. But, so this is the logic voltage, okay? But sometimes IGBTs, for instance, requires very high voltage or, or even the SICK to be drived. And so this driver here requires, for instance, 15 volts and they must be isolated. But they don't require so much current, like one amp is enough. So you start from low voltage to an higher voltage, but with low current. And there's no need to use an expensive push-pull of bulk inductors and etc. You can use this solution instead. So we want to have V in equal to 5 volts and V out equal to 20 volts, more or less and an output current of 1 amp an efficiency at least of 90% so let's do this and we want a solution which a compact solution compact with small small passive okay this is important so let's open spice and as you can see i'm ready designed the two MOSFET for the push-pull, the switching frequency very high because we want a uh, very uh, high compactness. So let's name this as G1 and this gate as G2. Uh, now, let's put the transformer. K, L1, L2, L3, L4, equal to 1. Oh, sorry, this is a spice directive, by the way. Oh, oh. Now it's good. Let's connect everything. Ah, I missed. and the input voltage. Now we want to use the easiest transformer possible so the true ratio will be equal to 1 because the solution must be compact and simple so the true ratio will be equal to 1 and what we can use instead is a voltage doubler. The voltage doubler basically doubles the voltage So we need to load at V peak the midpoint, which is this. I will put 100 nano as the first value, then we will design properly, and a shot key diode. Then let's replicate the solution like this, but the diode is in the other direction. And this is the midpoint which will be clamped. So what does this circuit does? Basically, this point here will be charged at V peak, which in, this, in our case is 10 volt in the first cycle. In the other cycle, this point here will be charged to 10 volts, but since, since there is 10 volt in this point here, the overall voltage will be 10 plus 10. So I will have in the next cycle 20 volts. This is why it's called the voltage doubler. Pay attention that uh, this point here is crucial to the functioning on the voltage doubler. If this point has mu so much ripple, too much ripple, then you won't have you you will have uh, an unstable voltage. It will decrease highly with the current. Uh, now now I'm going to show it to you. This voltage must be stable, so I should put at least. 10 micro and let's put a load on 1 kilo let's call this node out ok 
okay and now let's run the simulation so oh sorry I forgot the ground and the simulation first let's analyze each inductor and as you can see each inductor on the, on the primary is stimulated between 5 and minus 5 volts and this is correct otherwise it would saturate so at top of this shoe we have plus and minus double v in at the secondary side we have the same that's good now let's check this point here as you can see we have a tremendous amount of ripple this is not good because it means that the, vo the, the, the voltage doubler is not working properly we need to, to increase the value of this capacitance as you can see I have yes I have 19 volts but if I increase the load to 20 for instance as you can see the voltage, the voltage output voltage has decreased because this ripple is so much is too much high and so we need to increase these two capacitances for instance to 18 nano now the voltage has come back to 18 volts and the output power is almost one amp as you can see we designed a very simple and fast circuit but we notice two things. First, it's very weak to high currents. Works only under one or two amps. Oh, sorry, it's too big. It's very big, but, but, it's compact, small, fast, and easy. And the transformer doesn't saturate. So, this is good. Let's calculate efficiency. So we have 17.15. Let's put the calculator. 17.15. Over. Oh, there are some spikes here. So let's use all this range here. Oh no. Over 18.70. So the efficiency is 92%. This is good. So it's very efficient, small, compact. It is, it is switching, of course. I will leave you I will leave you with some useful waveforms this point here and of course G1 and G2 and the primary and the secondary all zoomed to the point of interest like this and of course the load current I think that we can end the video right we can end the video now Thank you guys for your attention and the next video will be will involve a, de a designing of a complete push-pull with the inductor as you can see this push-pull does not require the inductor because it's very very uh, it's a very very low voltage very 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 po low power so there is no reason to design an inductor and to filter out the output voltage and current thank you guys for your attention and see you in the next video